Hello, and welcome to this video on DAPF, a new module from Instro. And this has really been a kind of wow learning moment for me because I didn't realize how flexible and powerful all pass filters were. We're going to use them as a kind of super, uber, mega, califragilistic stereo oscillator expander. <laughs> I'm also going to use it as a phaser, which I did know all pass filters could do, but I didn't realize I'd get just kind of chewy harmonic shifts out of it. And finally, but potentially most impressive, I didn't realize I could use all pass filters to build a totally analog, free operator, DX or CZ style FM and phase modulation synth. This video is sponsored by Instro, and we'll hear from Jason from Instro later in the video, who's going to tell us about when all pass filters are filters and when they're not filters, and also break down how these inherent phase shifts in all pass filters are at the core of all filter topologies. Now, an all pass filter lets all frequencies pass. It's not like a low pass or a high pass where there's actually a band of frequencies that are carved out, but what that does is introduce phase shifts. We can see that here on the scope if I patch in. And if you watch the screen, this is what phase shifting through the different harmonics in a saw wave look like. Interestingly, this doesn't give any inherent tonal shifts, even though these waveforms look pretty vastly different to the saw wave at the input. DAV simply means dual all pass filter. And this is 4HP with two all pass filters. Each channel has an input and an output, a manual all pass frequency control or phase shift control, a CV input with a tenuverter, and then we have global settings for 6 dB or 12 dB, that's one pole or two pole of all pass filtering, and a volt per octave, which will sum with the other CVs and manual controls. Now, as I said at the start, this really has been a kind of wow moment for me. So I wanted to make a video that just condensed all the ideas here, but there's lots of them for how to use all pass filters down into free patches and they're on screen if you'd like to skip around. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here I'm using DAF as a kind of super stereo wave shaper or an expander for any basic analog oscillator with a few basic analog outputs from an oscillator and our good old friends envelopes and VCAs. This is what we've built and we're monitoring that file directly here as stereo left and right. So removing my modulation, here's what we're starting with. Green cables and green trace, the triangle wave is the input to DAP. The right input normalizes to left. So it's the same input here and it's the left and right output here, yellow and blue traces and cables that we're monitoring. Now I can wave shape and phase adjust. But what we're going to do here is patch other outputs from this oscillator into the CV inputs to wave shape them. So starting with the left here, I have the CV already set up and it's coming through a VCA. This is the square wave, pink trace there on data, You can see we start to wave shape that signal. And if you've got headphones on, you'll hear this all the way over to the left. Purple cables here is the ramp wave output, it's not on the scope. And that gives a more interesting shape there than potentially the square does. But they work really well together. And the reason I have these in a VCA, rather than just adjusting the CV mini trim pots here, is so that I can envelope this in and out. If I add an envelope to control this square wave. Now on the other side, if I envelope this in with a slightly different envelope pattern, this is the saw wave through the VCA enveloped in, modulating the right hand side. So if both of them play in, I 
brought Proctive Sequence back into Neoni. So the triangle that we're listening to and modulating and the square and the saw that we're modulating phase with will all move together. It kind of sounds like there's filters playing. But this is just that far. We're not coming into VCAs, low pass gates or filters at the end of the signal chain. I want you to hear this raw output, so that's all we're monitoring. And then one nice thing, if I remove these envelopes, is to patch feedback. I'm summing the output of DAP here into a single mono sound here, and I'm going to plug that into the Vault Proctive. So we have feedback, the output of DAP summed together to modulate itself. With the envelopes from the different waveforms here, and then adding the feedback, It's a really interesting kind of rubbery, stretchy phase modulation ultimately, but it doesn't sound like something I've heard before. So here we're using DAF to create these really resonant, really kind of chewy phaser effects. I'm just playing a keyboard off screen for these arpeggios. And there's some drums backing up and phasing and synth voice. So this is a really basic saw wave oscillator into low pass, a little bit of envelope modulation to the filter. And I'm treating that as my whole synth voice before coming into DAP for this phasing. If I remove all my sequencing, you can hear this really chewy, phasing effect that we have. And to get this really kind of deep phasing, there's two things that we have to do to DAF. The first being setting up a resonance path, a feedback loop, and the second using certain inputs and outputs to get the deepest levels of phasing. Starting with the feedback loop, you need to use an input mixer and a splitter at your output stage to enable the use of a feedback loop. My output of my synth voice comes into this utility mixer. The output of the mixer feeds the input to DAP. The output of DAP is split. One copy goes to be recorded and monitored, and the other here with the orange cable comes back to my input mixer. That mixer then goes to the input. The output is split back to the mixer. Input, output, mixer, input, feedback loop. And one thing to do here is actually invert your feedback. If I add positive, these mixer channels are attenuverters, so I can add normal signal here to the right. We do get a really nice tonal shift. So that's positive feedback going counterclockwise for negative feedback. This is where the really nice resonance emerges. And then the second thing to do is to use the right input and right output. This is because of this kind of circular clockwise normalization on DAP, where the right input normalizes to the left. So the single input here feeds both channels. And then the left output, if it's unpatched, will sum into the right output. So we're actually hearing both channels by going right in, right out here. I'm using the right input here because this normalizes to the left for CV. So both channels are moving together. You could use different modulators and even patch into the Vault Per Octave to add to and adjust that modulation. But I just wanted really basic phasing to show how kind of chewy and effective it is. Drums back in. All pass filters can actually be patched up to behave as many different filter types. Before digging in, let's quickly answer two questions. Question one, when is a filter not a filter? Question two, when is a sawtooth wave not a sawtooth wave? The spectral makeup of a sawtooth wave includes all harmonic overtones following the overtone series. Uh, on a spectrum analyzer, it looks like this. It's the rich harmonic content of a sawtooth wave, which is why it sounds particularly good to a resonant filter.
So here is when a filter is not a filter. This is the sawtooth wave direct. And here's that same sawtooth wave through the all-pass filter into the spectrum analyzer. And now this is me adjusting the center frequency of the all-pass filter. There's a high chance you heard absolutely no difference at all during that sweep of the center frequency. And that's, that's kind of the point because this is not a filter. Okay, now for the second question, when a sawtooth wave isn't a sawtooth wave, uh, that is when it looks like this. This is what a tuple all-pass filter does to a sawtooth wave. What this is doing is actually dynamically shifting the phase of the various overtones that make up the spectrum of the sawtooth wave, but specifically with without actually affecting their amplitudes. And as a result, we can see it takes a sawtooth wave and makes it go all, all wonky. And it's this wonkiness which is actually the trick behind so many voltage controlled filters. This is a 50-50 mix of my dry sawtooth wave and my all-pass filter sawtooth wave. And ta-da, we have a low-pass filter. Uh, and that's because the cancellation of the overtones is happening inconsistently across the spectrum as the center frequency moves. What about a high pass filter? Easy. All we need to do is invert this low pass response and just sum it in with another copy of the dry signal. Notch is even easier. All we need to do is change to tuple response, sum that with the original, and there we go. It's uh, pretty much the exact same as a phaser. Let's push things a little bit further. Resonance in a filter is just feedback. So it's just, uh, we just patch feedback into this mess. Sometimes we might want to invert it and that gives us negative feedback, which uh, can sometimes help with musical squelchiness. Um, other times things just get weird and kind of formanty. Yeah, filters are pretty weird. All pass filters doubly so. The DAP's a pretty weird module itself. I, th I think that's because all pass filters can simultaneously be not a filter, but also simultaneously be any kind of filter you could possibly want, depending on how you patch it. So here we've built up a free operator, totally analog, Yamaha DX FM style sound, or Casio CZ phase distortion sound. Let me just play around, really enjoying this. So because you can modulate phase here really musically without any pitch drift, we get a really stable, as I said, DX or CZ style FM phase modulation type sound. The UVCF6 is the green trace here, green cables, and that's the starting bass oscillator we're actually listening to and modulating. Comes into the left hand channel of DAP, out of the left channel, into the right input, so I'm chaining two channels in series, and it's the right output that we're monitoring. I'm modulating the first channel with these blue cables here, blue trace and the 1047 sine wave, this is tuned an octave above the one that we're currently listening to. And as I bring its modulation up in a VCA, we can hear this really lovely phase distortion, phase modulation, clean musical FM tone. So I'm going to envelope that in, in the VCA. So the modulation into the VCA envelopes the controller level, then into DAP to CV modulate. And it's a mixture of two envelopes. The first here, it's just my clock, just ticking away. And then one that follows the main sequence down here. And mixing two envelopes is something I really like to do for dynamic patches. Just a little bit of this clock one ticking away. There's none. And there's that 16th note clock just tucking away. Let's add the main envelope on top. So we've already got a two layer, kind of two dynamic stage modulation here on channel one. All of this that we're hearing is then going into channel two, the right hand channel here. And that channel is being modulated by the pink trace here, the sine wave from Neoni. And this is two octaves above.
So on any steps or sounds where channel 1 isn't modulating, I've currently turned that off, this is just the green trace here, the UVCF6 being modulated by its pink trace and red cables. That has a different sequence, it's this one. So if I get the first modulator in, an octave up, with two stages of envelopes controlling its level, and then all of this into the right channel and adding the modulation of the right channel now. Manually there, just adjusting VCA level, and now with the envelope. If you got this far in the video, go drop a hard sink in the comments. Let me know which patch was your favourite. If you head over to patreon.com forward slash divkid, you can join my community gain access to exclusive files such as the PDF of the first patch here with a text breakdown, modular grid images, patch notes, and the signal flow chart as well. Hit like and subscribe, it all helps out the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.